Hey guys and welcome to an absolutely insane showdown. I'm a rubber duck war, but today we're going to be focusing on the mighty army of Slanesh taking on the forces of Korn. Unfortunately, I can't remember who sent this one in. I believe it was Stefan or it was either uh, Cap Morgan as well. Maybe I'll have to double check and let you guys know down below in the comment section. Unfortunately, the game doesn't tell you, but should be some good fun. We are on a death pass, which is a map I think is really quite good for Slanesh due to their high speed. They can really bomb around and make the most of that and try to contest as many objectives at the same time as possible and it is going to be Slanesh versus Korn which is an absolute balmy matchup speed versus raw power going to be a good fun one thank you for everyone who has been sending in replays recently they have been incredibly awesome and I'm excited to showcase the next couple are an absolute treat they got some insanely close games going to be coming out in the glorious domination game mode Feel free to, uh, as well, if you enjoyed this content by the end of the video, to subscribe, as we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers, which I'm very excited about. But without further ado, let's get involved in the action. Leading the forces of Sunesh is going to be the mighty Inkari, with all his glorious nipple rings and his mighty swords and crab claws. Coming in with Will and Prey, as well as the Witsealer Sword, we have the Lash of Slanesh, the Pavine of Slanesh, and Slicing Shards as his toolkit. Very powerful, can basically 1v1 anyone in the game, apart from maybe Scarbrand. Scarbrand in continuous combat will be able to punch back really hard against Inkari, but Inkari's got the extra speed to cycle charge effectively. We do have a load of Marauders of Slanesh who have unfortunately replaced their limbs with swords to, uh, I guess, worship the mighty Slanesh, but hey, each to their own, I suppose, and they're just going to be decent bog standard infantry to apply a bit of pressure to the middle. On the left-hand side, we have some Hell Striders of Sunesh who look absolutely glorious. Some of the best units in the entire game. And somebody in my comment section said they reminded me of the Gun Gun um like mounts from star wars the like first movie and ever since then i can't get it out of my mind so i guess sinesh are now indeed led by the mighty jar jar on the far side we have double hell striders once more pretty good stuff indeed for the force of corn got a little bit more tightly compact here on the left hand side we have some chaos warhounds going to go say hello to objective three and mark their territory in dog style we do have a double cultist of corn who's become very meta i think they're some of the best cultists as well the noga one's kind of taken the pick as the best but the uh, cultist of corn still do a decent job coming in with those glorious gates of corn allowing bloodletters to be swarmed onto the battlefield now they hold no weight in caption objectives but in the early game you're really looking to get the best trades and the most damage dealt rather than capturing the objectives which is more of a mid and late game priority double chaos wars of corn just such a solid troop all around the infantry of corn is really quite scary but leading the army in all his regal gloriousness the pure rage bubbling to the surface it is scarbrand the exiled double axes bellowing a war cry and a challenge to his fallen brother of Slanesh coming in angry and ready for a good fat scrap he does have the bellows of endless fury which is a nice little breath attack i don't often take it myself but we'll have to see how it performs with the wrathful reaper and rage embodied being able to rampage enemies in an air effect is so goddamn powerful and i really do like that as an ability for him fantastic for catching out and surrounding enemy lords and so on Looks like Inkari doing a little bit of a dance. He's going to be waiting for his homies to catch up, which is probably the best play here. Scarbrand's just like showing him his butt, like, hey, come take it, big boy. And he's uh, ready for a big old scrap, just yeeting ahead. He's like, get back here, Inkari. I'll face you man to man. He's going to do a big fat breath attack down onto the Marauders of Slanesh, doing some pretty decent damage. Nothing too crazy, but hey, damage is damage. And he's up to 23 kills, which certainly isn't too shabby. Cultists are leading the charge with the Chaos Warriors behind them, but Scarbrand doesn't give a damn. Just sort of launches his axe into the ground, sending Marauders sprawling in all different directions, but in comes Inkari. All the buffs starting to be activated, and this is going to be one hell of a scrap. We do have the Wit Stealer Sword active, Rage Embodied as well, though, and the Raffle Reaper, and Will and Prey. It is just all or nothing. He's doing so much damage. Nearly down to about half HP is Scarbrand, but he does turn to engage, and he should be able to hit back relatively strong if he can connect with some of those big blows. We do have Hellstrider Snesh starting to swarm around and try to surround Scarbrand where possible, but look at those hits. Down to half HP, Nakari as well. We get the Bloodletter Summon in the background, making a glorious background drop for this epic jewel of mighty heroes. And it is so close. So Garbrand jumps into the air, bringing down both his axes, but he is looking quite weak himself. And Kari takes the pain though and is running in hot retreat as Bloodletters swarm in. Scarbrand is getting surrounded and dragged down himself. However, with more 
Hell Strider starting to wrap around the flanks. In come the Marauders of Slaanesh. We do have a Hell Cannon summon, or Skull Cannon, I should say, by the Force of Corn. If they can pop on top of Nakari, they should be able to finish them off. Nakari is currently winded and taking a bit of a breather. Scarbrand is surrounded by the enemies, and a big shot goes down range, and boom! Clips Nakari, I believe, on the dome there. That's going to be enough to drag him down and actually bring low the mighty Demon Lord of Madness himself. So Nakari's down. Scarbrand doesn't look like he'll be too far behind him, though. He does have the Bloodletter summons in a nice bit of support, but he is very much surrounded by Fiends of Sinesh, Hell Striders, and more Hell Striders just pouring on top of him as the Bloodletters start to go down here in the middle. The Cult of Corn are just holding firm just about. Marauders of Sinesh and Chaos Warriors of Corn are fighting out in the middle. Lovely play, though, by the Sinesh player, bringing over some more Hell Striders to jump in as Furies are summoned to the action as well. Hell Striders just vibing out on the flanks for now. So a nice dominant early start from Corn, I would say. They put a lot of hurting on Scarbrand, but nothing too crazy now. Now they're losing a large portion of their forces as the uh, Skull Cannon does move up to help support here. Hellstriders, as well as the Fiends, continue to hound and harass Scarbrand wherever possible, which is definitely the right play. If I'm the Corn player, I'm trying to pull Scarbrand out through my Enforcer as quickly as possible, and then probably just withdraw him from the battlefield. He is simply too weak at the moment, only 2,000 HP left on him. He can easily be assassinated by some of these uh, cheap units of Sinesh with their anti-large, and they're really doing a decent number on him right now. Hell Cannon shots are supporting, though, doing decent damage to the Fiends, and we have Furies coming over, breaking away the Hellstriders, and once again freeing up Scarbrand the Exiled to to bring his Wrath and Fury to the battlefield. Early cap is going to be done here, it seems, by Corn holding that middle objective, and objective three is now being captured by the Flesh Hounds of Corn, who are able to win that flank. Objective number one held by no one at the moment. It looks like Scarbrand was indeed withdrawn, which is really good play there, uh, in my humble duck opinion from the Corn player. He was just uh, waiting to be assassinated at that point. In the main fight, Marauders doing a decent job. I really cannot wait for the Blood and Gore DLC, though, because there's something not quite right about seeing these glorious warriors of Corn beating their shields and axes against Sinesh and not getting coated in their glorious gore, which they are, of course, all about. Lovely rear attack comes in by the cavalry. The Warriors of Corn holding firm for now, which they're such a good staple strong unit in the center of any build. And more Chaos Warriors keeping the enemy off the central objective with their lives. Really lovely play by both players so far. Seems like the Skull Cannon has been surrounded by the Hell Striders. Luckily, there is some Skull Crushers. Oh, hell yeah! Rock and Roll Skull Crushers. They walk on living metal fused with flesh and they march to battle easily beat back the Hell Striders, and it looks like they're going to attempt to jump the second unit. Now, Seekers, of course, do come in with uh, pretty decent damage all round, but we're going to have to see how they fare up against the Skull Crushers. The early cap lead is starting to, starting to add up a little bit here. 500 damage value to Korn. Objective 3 is theirs, Objective 2 is there, and Objective 1 is absolutely no one's at the moment. Snesh still desperately trying to fight for this middle objective. More cavalry has been summoned by them. You can see there in the distance as the fight continues. Skull Cannon getting down and dirty in combat. Just popping some wheelies. Fire sprouting from multiple mouths as they run over the cheaper infantry of Snesh and just have an absolute whale of a time. We have more Furies being summoned. Looks like two units for Corn, which is going to do okay. I mean, it's going to get them to the front line quickly and able to try to shut down the mobility of Snesh, but they have no capture weight themselves, so a little bit risky as well. I'd definitely like to see Snesh start to float out to Objective 1 and Objective 3 a little bit, start contesting the side objectives and using the mobility because they're simply not winning this head-to-head -head button or fight between Corn, and it's really tough for anyone to beat Corn in that kind of one-on-one -on -one rampage. Looks like Flesh Hounds have been moved back from defending that objective to jump on top of the Hell Striders and help deal with them and just drag down these warriors from their steeds. Man, Flesh Hounds are so freaking badass. And they're huge. They're nearly as tall as the mounts themselves. That could be a uh, cool future unit, perhaps, using Flesh Hounds as mounts. But I guess that's what Skull Crushers are, just with a load of armored meta on top of them. Skull Crushers seem to be suffering, though, a little bit. They are constantly getting cycle charged down by the Hell Striders. A little bit of support comes in for them from the Skull Cannon, though, as Corners looks so dominant here in the early game, taking a 1,355 ticket lead. That is giving it free losing compensation to Selanesh, but it's not much, considering they're probably trading very badly damage value-wise. They do seem to have a lot more cavalry on the field now than uh, Corn, which is certainly good news for them. Some Blood Letters being summoned in to push at the middle objective. And it's like Corn want to get even at Greedy with some Chaos Warhounds moving out to capture Objective 1 and go for an early triple cap would be quite nice. We have Marauders of Snesh moving over here, but with the help of the Furies plus the Hounds plus the Skull Cannon fire, perhaps there is a chance they could overwhelm them. Skull Cannons seem to work in the same way of hand as other gods, so you can't want to be mid-range as their best range to actually hit in targets. Now, Snesh are starting to push forward onto that middle objective, making the most of their extra resources that the Seekers of Snesh are really running over the Chaos Warriors of Corn. 
They've got to be careful though. Bloodlets are on the approach as are Flesh Hounds. There's like two units who are going to bomb rush in to try to contest objective two. 1,885 ticket advantage at the moment. Skull Cannon's trying his best, but the Hell Striders have surrounded it. This is really beautiful play by the Snesh player. Uses Cav to isolate it. Now, what you want to do in this situation is take your Cav, force move a little bit further ahead than you currently are, and that will help you surround and drag down single entities a little bit quicker. But hey, that's uh, easy to say when you're, I'm zooming in like this. Of course, microing that on the battlefield is quite a bit harder. So the Skull Cannon going to be going down here. It's poisoned. It's unstable. Not having a good day. Looks like the Chaos Fears of Corn don't really know where to go either. There's so much cavalry for Snesh all over the battlefield, but they're unable to capture Objective 2. They were so close, but the reinforcements of Bloodletters and the two cultists just standing strong in the middle seems to be enough at the moment. But if all the cav float over into this objective, you'd think they would have enough to overwhelm the Bloodletters as well as the Flesh Hounds. Objective 1's being contested by both players. It seems like the Chaos Warriors, uh, Warhounds might actually better cap this. It's not going in any direction, really, so it seems like a bit of a stalemate on the left. Objective 3 is well and truly corn favoured. These are Flesh Hounds do need to get activated once more but look at this 2500 lead 7 8 losing compensation now for Slash attempting to get back into the game and by the way the um a little while ago I did uh, speak about foreign videos but the combat mechanic has been nerfed from like pre-release so it's not a good idea just to let your opponent capture all objectives it seems to go very badly from what I've seen now but obviously the Snesh player is contesting but unfortunately not having the best time Snesh has managed to jump and surround the Bloodlayers, doing some decent damage to them. In comes a Blood Shrine of Corn, which is an interesting choice here. Not the biggest fan of this from the Corn player, as there's not that much infantry to contest with. It does tend to be mainly cavalry on the battlefield at the moment, and it's really going to suffer against this cheap cavalry. It's really going to do a number on it. It does have some pretty cool animations, though, so hey, that's got to count for something. And look at the guy on top. He's just having a whale of a day. Just absolute blast, cheering. Blood for the Blood Gods, skulls for the Skull Throne, bread for the Black Gods, and all that good standard stuff. I'm pretty sure that's how the law works. Beans of Snesh are going to be moving in. Such a fantastic unit. One of the most beautiful units in the game. Going to be jumping and probably taking out some of the Warriors of Corn or even surround the Blood Shrine. And the middle objective is starting to fall now in the favor of Slanesh, who are really struggling. But they are starting to cap objective one, which is good to see. Marauders of Slanesh were able to beat back the Chaos Warhounds. And it looks like this actually did stay neutral. So it's still just a double cap for Corn. About to be a 2-1 uh, cap, though, it seems. Morals of Sinesh and Hell Striders are being summoned in to the main fight. Likewise, we have more Chaos Warriors of Corn coming in from the Corn forces. Middle objective is slowly going to Snesh, but it is so slowly. Chaos Warriors down just eight men refusing to run. They live for this. They breathe for this. Marauders of Sinesh are going to be going down here as more Marauders do surround the Flesh Hounds. Quite a nice counter to them, actually, with their spears as well. If we get some spear units in here, these do seem to be the basic sword variety. What do their hands look like? Pretty cool stuff. Again, they're just big, pointy old... Uh, fiendish hands, which obviously, uh, I guess a blessing, <laughs> maybe a blessing from Slanesh. It seems quite cruel to me. There's a load of Furies here in the middle, just trying to kill as many Snesh capture units as possible. Though they can't capture themselves, they can kill the Fiends and the Marauders, and it looks like Corn is going to continue to hold Objective 2, coming in with a 3,700 ticket lead. Marauders Snesh move in. Hell Striders will be jumping on top of the Flesh Hounds of Corn. We do have more Hell Striders moving out now alongside some Seekers of Snesh to cap Objective 3, and this is very smart from the Snesh player. He needs to split up his uh, forces and capture these side objectives. He will need a triple cap to be able to win the game, but if you do this, you can stretch the Corn forces quite heavily. Be interesting to see if Corn actually just sticks on the middle which would be a viable tactic rather than getting pulled apart uh, by Sinesh, which is something Sinesh does very well now that they only need to hold one objective. But with the extra resources coming in, you'd think Sinesh would be able to overwhelm Corn. We have 14 extra resources per second coming in, which is a pretty damn crazy and huge uh, difference right now. But have the trades gone Sinesh's favor? Probably not. I think all around Corn's done a bit more damage, particularly in that early game. So it's probably not that too uh, different, different uh, in kind of uh, resources at the moment. We do have 500 in reserve, though, it seems, for Snesh. Now, the Skull Cannon's been summoned. I like this play quite a bit. Going to counter infantry nicely alongside the Blood Shrine of Corn, And uh, there's going to need a lot of infantry pushing towards Objective 2. Looks like Objective 1 has been claimed by Snesh. There was a tiny bit of counter pressure with Flesh Hounds coming in. But with Seekers here and Roller Spears, it's pretty much in vain. And it is now a 2 against 1 cap for the forces of Snesh. The Cavalry is going to be rotating hard here to the middle. And they're going to have to chuck a lot of forces to bring down 
down the corn forces as we have Chaos Warriors in here with beat up Flesh Hounds and beat up uh, Blood Letters. But the double cards of corn, a big pain in the butt. That Skull Cannon ripping shots down the line, doing some massive damage to Marauders of Sinesh, who are not having a good day whatsoever. Shields have been raised, but Mighty Doggos come crashing into the side, sending them flying as it looks like uh, more Flesh Hounds hit them from the front. The Blood Letters taunting them. Come at me, bro. They're getting ready as the fire launches over through the fire and the flames. The Marauders of Sinesh doth go. Blood Letters meet their charge, though. Blades in hand. Looks like the Hell Strider Cavalry has arrived. Can we do a massive flank attack onto the Blood Shrine as well as on top of the Chaos Warriors? We do have Furies moving in. We would love to see some big air effect spells, but unfortunately, Corn cannot bring spells, which is going to be a bit disastrous from here. Except Magellan, there's some spells in this big blob fight. Cavalry is well and truly surrounded, though. I love this play by the Corn player. Coming in the Chaos Furies to get a big, juicy rear attack. Chaos Warriors also dragging them down. Coldest of Corn, Horn of Corn going down as well, inspiring them to greater feats of bloodshed. Just reaping a bloody toll on Slanesh. They are easily outtrend Slanesh damage-wise, but is it going to be enough to hold the objective? It does not look like it's Slanesh starting to push through. A desperate gander of Flesh Hounds has been pushed on a little bit forward to hold back the tide of Manlins. These pesky Marauders coming in, but it looks like the Seekers of Slanesh were able to uh, force themselves through. I should say the Fiends of Slanesh, and my god, do they have... They've got some really funny top buns and stuff, but they have some really cool animations in general. They whip those tails in darts of destruction and death, so... 4,895 tickets has been triple capped though. The corn player so close to winning. Literally needs to hold on for a few more seconds. But Sinesh gets the triple cap. Is the comeback on? It looks like the middle is still being quite dominated by Sinesh. Despite losing huge casualties to take it. They were able to take it. But corn starts to take it back. It is very contested there in the middle. Objective 1 securely in the hands of one unit of Marauders of Sinesh. But on the left hand side we have some cheeky Flesh Hound play. Flesh Hounds popping onto Objective 3 which did have to get abandoned so Sinesh could capture that middle objective. There's double Chaos Fury is coming in for Sinesh, and the problem for them is they need to kill these Flesh Hounds before they cap it. They actually have to kill them because uh, they can't cap it themselves, and it looks like the Corn player knows this, summoning his own Chaos Furies to help deal with the enemy ones in what is going to be a pivotal fight on Objective 3. There is going to be 22 Hell Striders on approach, though, which could prove pretty huge, and the middle fight was won by Sinesh, but my god, have they paid for it. Look how much damage they took. They had a, such a bigger army here in the middle, but are they going to be able to hold on to Objective 2? They've got quite a long time to come back 2145 tickets to the 4895 for corn there Flesh Hounds doing a decent job as the Fiends of Snesh start to go down in the middle. More infantry is just being pushed in towards Objective 2, and it certainly needs to be. But Objective 3 cannot be forgotten either. That's kind of the stress the Snesh player is under. It looks like the Furies are able to overwhelm the Chaos Furies of Corn, and the Flesh Hounds should be going down here. So it was a nice attempt. Got about halfway to capturing the objective, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It does seem like Sinesh once again pain in blood to keep this hold of this objective, and it is relatively close to the home objective for Corn. So more Flesh Hounds piling in here could be a big problem, particularly because there's only 13 Hell Striders left, and the Furies have zero capture weight. Maybe. The Flesh Hounds can hold on here, maybe. They're still capping the objective, but just so goddamn slowly. I don't think it's going to matter too much there. And they are actually stabilizing, which is hilarious. Still, though, 4,895 to 2,895. Very close stuff indeed. Beans of Sinesh continue to pile on. We also have more Marauders of Sinesh starting to move in to the central objective. Flesh Hounds trying to keep the enemy at bay, though. And it is a real scrappy affair going on in the middle. The objective still being hold held by Sinesh. And it does seem like it's going more and more in their favor. Flesh Hounds in the distance did eventually go down. There's even some more Hell Striders brought over just in case they were needed to help support in that fight. We do have Skull Crushers, which is quite a big investment in this late game. Summoning some Skull Crushers, but they're relatively quick and they can push into the middle. They've got decent capture weight and hopefully will be enough for Corn at least to re-wrestle the middle control from the enemy. Warriors of Corn charge into the Marauders of Sunesh. The Shrine, I thought it was going to be a bad pick early on. It's actually done a pretty decent job. Been impressed with the Corn player keeping it alive. Up to 61 kills. And uh, not only does that go on the top having a fun time, there's two Bloodlines on the front just manically laughing as uh, they do a bucket ton of damage here in the middle. There's in the fight as well, and Objective 2 is starting to be capped now by the forces of Corn. They also summon Blood Letters, which I think is really smart. Blood Letters in the mid to late game are a bit better than Chaos Warriors in a sense, because they can get to that objective so much quicker. The Snatch player is really catching up now. 3,900.
360 points to 4,895. Momentum is certainly in his favor. Objective 3 also being held by Sinesh. Objective 1, there's simply nothing contesting right now. We do have Blood Letters as well as Chaos Warhounds all pushing towards Objective 2. And it is slowly being capped by Korn. But there's not that much time left. 4,230 tickets and that is rising rapidly. The Chaos Furies aren't uh, having the best of days in the middle here. The Skull Cannon doing an absolute chad job. The Skull Crush is an inspired pick. Really adding some stability in the middle here. In comes the Shrine. In comes the Warhounds and the Blood Letters. This is it. This is do or die. The final push of Corn. Have they been able to catch it quick enough? Because even if they capture this, they still have a disadvantage of only owning one objective against two. But they still have a pretty okay lead at the moment. 4,600 tickets to pretty much 4,900. And the middle objective has been finally wrestled back by corn is it enough only time will tell the blood shrine did a fantastic job hell stride is pouring in we also have marauders of Silanesh here and it is so close the tickets gone up 10 at a time for the force of Silanesh, but five at a time for corn should just be about enough 4845 tickets you cannot get much closer than that but trust me, in the next couple of replays, we will. <laughs> we will. Insane game. Man, I love this game so much. It looks so freaking cool. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I enjoyed watching it and casting it. That was just a bucket ton of fun. That was that was really awesome stuff indeed. Well played to both these chads. Uh, I do need to double check who it is. I'm actually going to look it up on my phone in a second. Just so I get the right player. I feel like it was Stefan who sent this one in. But maybe I am wrong. Let's have a quick look. It looks like it was Stefan06. Thank you so much, man, for sending in this replay. It's also awesome to send in a close defeat like this. That's my favorite ones to ca um, cast. I like casting a mixture of wins and losses. So if you are looking to get cast on the channel, feel free to send in all your best games, whether they be good or, like wins or close losses, fun strategies and all that fun stuff to my Discord. There's a link in the description down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and comment. That's the holy trio of algorithm power. And I really do appreciate it as we're on the road now to 10,000 subscribers which is uh pretty crazy pretty crazy to say the least so thank you all for the support it's been pretty crazy over the release of game three and there's a not much chance of us slowing down right now we're just going to keep it going because i'm having such a fun time also there's a link down below in the uh, description twitch patreon all that goodness the Kari versus Scarbrand, it's kind of like the climactic, anticlimactic fight because it just happened so quickly and then it was over and neither could be summoned uh, once again because they're quite expensive. And Kari, zero kills, 1,900 damage value. Chad Brand himself, though, Scarbrand, put in his axe deep in the chest of Inkari. 75 kills, outperforming his brother in all ways. 14k damage dealt, 4 1173 gold value he also survived the battle he was withdrawn to get back a little bit of money and allow him to be summoned again a bit quicker though we didn't get to see him again it was a, a talented play there by the corn player for sure hell striders 900 damage value 1000 damage value 1.9k damage value such a powerful unit definitely i would say uh so i suppose i say definitely fiends are pretty good as well but probably the best unit in the snesh roster 950 495, 461, 678 for the Marauders. You'll remember they were summoned multiple times though. Seeker Sinesh are fantastic. 1.8k and 2.6k damage value. They're also very powerful. And the Fiends did a decent job. 47 and 14 kills with 1.1 and 680 value on them. Another 1,000 on the Hellstrides. Unfortunately, never saw the Soul Grinder in action. Fury did a decent enough job. And likewise, the infantry always going to suffer against Corn, but they are a necessity to cap in those objectives. Scarbrand, the Chad. Holtis the corn at 935 and 900 value though on both of them. These guys have fought amazing. They stuck it out all game, fighting on that middle objective, contesting too late. Their blood was boiling with rage. 108, 118 kills is very impressive. Plus the old blood less summon. Fantastic play with them. And the infantry was just solid. 91, 147 kills, 780, and 859 gold value. Warhounds did a decent job as well. Quite impressed with the skull crushers and corn. I think they were ended up summoned twice. Um only 900 value on them, but they added a lot of mass to the middle and pinned in a lot of the Sinesh units of 98 kills. Skull Cannon was a beautiful play. 186 kills, 1.7k gold value. You can add Nikari's skull to its mount. Uh, just shy of 1,000 value on the Blood Shine. Pretty impressed with it regardless. Blood Letters, 1.2k value on one unit. Anything else crazy? 1.6 on Flesh Hounds. My god. 1,800 on the other unit. And the uh, Fury is just a big pain in the butt with the stand up being 2,000 damage value and 164 kills. 800 gold value and 100 kills and the other one is certainly not too shabby whatsoever hope you guys enjoyed this one it was a fantastic one to cast until next time peace peace and as always stay awesome